I'm out here getting ready to activate a park, and uh, you know I've got this uh, this antenna, this fan vertical that I've uh, kind of concocted, the W4BD, the 4020 fan vertical, and I'm going to throw it up there. Maybe we'll talk about it just a little bit more. I've had a few questions about it, so maybe uh, you know maybe we can answer those. I don't know. We'll uh, we'll see. And uh, I'll see here. We got to find a good tree. I have been at this park before, so. Uh, that I have is that I already know that tree that's standing the little higher peak right there uh, that's usually the one that I like to throw this thing into or the the one beside it all the leaves are gone now uh, since I was here last so actually that one's probably the one we'll we'll go with so I'll get my stuff out and we'll sling us a paracord up into the tree and we'll hoist this thing up and uh, talk about it a little bit before uh, I get on the air and just to show you, this is the entire antenna. You know, not the radials, but uh, this is the antenna. And uh, that's 35 plus feet of wire. And, uh, the, you know, I'll go into a little more details, uh, probably another video about the advantages and the disadvantages of this antenna. But uh, th this is certainly an advantage. Uh, it holds its shape, it's rigid, it rolls up really nicely. And uh, so, I mean, that's, that's part of the reason I like it. I mean, yeah, that's 35 plus feet of wire and it just rolls up nicely and uh, holds its shape and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, we're gonna tie the paracord uh, to this little insulator. Uh, I've just got a little uh, cheap uh, 20 cent electric fence insulator from I think Tractor Supply or something like that's where I got that. And that does a sufficient job. Uh, on that and you see the uh, the connector or the the SO239 it's just soldered in you know I mean there's nothing special there the little holes on it that's where I clip my radials uh, for the for the outer part so uh, nothing extravagant but uh, no balling or anything like that so there's uh, we don't have to deal with any loss of that anyway let's get this uh, let's get this paracord thrown up over the tree and we'll get this uh, bad boy uh, up there and uh, deployed and uh, you know I got my my throw blade here. Yeah, you know regular standard paracord works fine for the trees here. You know I've got some Dynaglide if I have to use it for uh, uh, especially cherry trees. They're notorious for uh, snagging this stuff up. But uh, and of course my best Michael Jackson impersonation. I've got the one glove <laughs> because this stuff will cut your hand. Ask me how I know. All right, so let's uh, let's give us a throw here. I've got the other end attached to the antenna, and uh, we'll see if we get it up in the tree. First try. That never happens. We'll uh, pull this thing up there and I'll show you as we get it going. So can you see it? Can you see the weight hanging there? Uh, we'll kind of work it down. Just whip, uh, whip the, uh, the paracord a little bit. There we go. Come on down, buddy. So I'll work on getting this down. It's hard to do one-handed, guys, but I got one hand holding the phone and the other. I'm just kind of just whipping the uh, the string a little bit letting it loose and it's coming on down now if you use the dynaglide or something like that it's a lot easier but uh, that adds another uh, string that I have to deal with so uh, I tend to not not use it unless it's somewhere I absolutely have to okay so I'm gonna go over here and uh, I'm gonna put the phone away and I'm gonna get this thing grab it out of the little uh, bush there I want to be able to watch my step and make sure I don't have any critters, uh, if you know what I mean. And uh, we'll pull this thing up here. All right, now I've got uh, I've got my paracord, and we're going to pull this up. And you see that uh, we're just unrolling it there on the ground. It kind of uh, goes neatly. There we go. I had to get the uh, the paracord loose. I had it in that branch there. That just took a second. wasn't too bad. And we'll pull this thing up now the rest of the way 
and we'll attach our uh, coax and our radials and uh, and I'll uh, I'll show you uh, how that goes so now I've got this thing temporarily uh, hoisted up I don't know how well you can see it but you know it goes up the tree there uh, I'll, I tend to uh, kind of untwist it you know it's not really critical but uh, you know I, I do kind of uh, untwist it there anyway just to kind of keep it uh you know fairly fairly well uniform so okay so uh we've done that and i'm going to go ahead and connect the radials here uh i've got these little uh these just little lanyard clips it's all that is uh, I don't know if you can even see that. I'll try to give you some shadow there so you can see. That's all that is. Just a little stainless steel lanyard clip. The whole idea is just to make this easy, you know. And, Lord, I don't know if I can do this one-handed or not. But, uh, we'll see. I don't think I can do it one-handed, guys. All right. I'll have to hit the pause button here and I'll connect these. But they just clip right on the hole. So, <laughs> be right back. Okay, I've got the radials clipped off there. I'm sorry I couldn't do that one-handed. I didn't have anything to hold the uh, the phone. Uh, so I'm going to pull these out. Now, I'm going to raise this. Uh, th this is about uh, not quite five feet at the moment. I'm just temporarily tied off so I could uh, connect coax and connect these radials. So what we're going to do is we're going to raise this thing up. And I want to get this feed point at about uh i like 10 feet but if i get it up eight feet that's you know that's, that's plenty uh so a 35 foot antenna and uh, the feed point around 10 feet you got to have about a 45 foot structure if you want to keep this thing perfectly vertical it does not have to be perfectly vertical uh, you can run it in a sloper configuration or you can um, you, you can set it up in an inverted l those will work fine the, the, the straight vertical is always going to be your best, but uh, uh, the other is still the other configurations are still going to work. So let's pull this thing up and get this thing right at about 10 feet. And then uh, I'll show you how I stake the radials because I've had a lot of questions about the radials. Uh, they're not earth grounded, but they're stuck into the earth. <laughs> so I'll explain what I mean by that uh, after we get this thing up here, just about another uh, five feet or so, and it'll, it should be about perfect. Now, I've got this thing up there. We're, you know, nine feet or so is about where I got it. So that must have meant I, I threw that thing about 44, 45 feet. I got it up there. And if you can see up there, there's a very slight bend at the top. So see... Uh, you're not you're not always going to get it perfectly straight uh, i guess i could have connected it to the line that came down uh but eh, the paracord you know that came down so what i do is i use these these are just cheap plastic landscaping spikes you know like you, people like to put out uh, uh, electric fence string lights just random stuff outside that's all this is uh, you can find these at lowe's home depot any of your uh, typical a uh, little uh, home uh, supply stores they're very easily lost in the grass though because of the collar so maybe uh maybe you guys will find something that's a little bit a uh, little bit better a uh, little bit brighter collar uh, i'm in a place where nobody should be walking through here so it's not as big a concern but uh, you also want to mark your radials and uh, it's good if you got uh, lighter colored wire like yellow or something like that but i've just got this uh, aw14 uh, or awg14 uh 14 awg i guess i should say um uh, electrical wire it's thhn stranded and that's all i'm using for my radials it's not really critical on your radials but what i'm going to do here if i can get this man this one-handed stuff is for the birds and birds don't even have hands all right so i'm going to just stick my spike i just tied a little knot there that's all i've done okay and i'm going to stick my my spike in that and that's what i mean when i say there's no electrical ground because um you know you you want to keep your wire insulated uh, we're not trying to earth ground this thing. We just want it to uh, just sticking in the ground for stability. That's all we're doing. 
So I'm going to bring this thing out here. Uh, I'll find me a place where, uh, you know, where it ought to work pretty good here. And I'm going to try to keep from moving it too much. And I'm just going to stick this in the ground. That's all I've done. And, you know, you're going to have, uh, it's probably going to be just a little bit sharper than 45 degrees. It'll be a little bit more of a, an acute angle than that. Also notice I do have a, this is an old store-bought choke, or I say store-bought, it's eBay choke um, that I already had. Uh, and I do choke the feed point. Uh, it gives me 17 meters. It keeps that coax out of the equation. That really shouldn't be much of a problem anyway because uh, it's, a, it's a quarter wavelength on 20 and 40. So you're not going to really need to worry too much about uh, common mode and stuff like that. You know, the more resonant your antenna is, the, uh, the less you got to worry about that. But I'm going to put these spikes on here. And I'll get the rest of these deployed. I'm going to kind of get out here a little bit and uh, stick this one in the ground. And I'll get the other two, and we'll look at the configuration there at the feed point, and we'll get started. So there's our feed point, and you can see the, uh, the verticals. I mean, I got them kind of roughly 90 degrees apart. It's not perfect. It doesn't have to be. But the whole idea is as i step back a little bit can you see if you can zoom in and kind of see the wires what kind of angle we have as we go down you know to the ground and again when i say ground i'm just talking uh just just uh, stuck in the ground for stability and so it holds its shape all right that's uh that is the deployed w4bd uh, 4020 fan vertical antenna. We'll connect it to the uh, transceiver and uh, we'll do some tests and look at SWRs and stuff like that and uh, maybe make a contact or two. And uh, then, uh, you know, I'll do a little bit. I'll probably do a separate video as well on some of the reasons why I like this antenna, the advantages and disadvantages there. Okay, so um, we're going to try to uh, to run the um, the SWR, I didn't bring a separate meter. I wish I had, uh, but uh, uh, we're going to use the uh, the internal meter here on the uh, ICOM 7300. Uh, so I don't know if you can see how well you can see based upon the, uh, the glare. I'm trying to give you some uh, relief from the sun there. Uh, but here we go. On, uh, this is no tuner. If you'll notice, the tuner is not turned on. So we'll... Uh, uh, if you see, uh, can you see where the uh, where the graph is? It's uh, quite nice. That's your SWRs on the antenna with four 17-foot radials. This is on 20-meter band, uh, raised up to about nine feet high uh, with the uh, W4BD 4020 fan vertical. All right, I'm going to stop here and uh, we'll uh, we'll do some more testing. Okay, for 40 meter band, uh, now your SWR is going to be just a fudge higher on 40. You know, we can adjust the, the height of that feed point uh, and the angle of those radials. Uh, you could adjust the length a little bit, but the 17 foot radials work uh, well for 40, believe it or not. So here's, uh, here's what we're looking at, uh, the SWR test as we go through. Uh, the highest as you get up closer to 7300 you got about it looks like about a 1.8 uh, to 1 uh, so you're averaging somewhere around a one and a half to 1 on 40 not not horrible actually it's a it's a pretty good uh, but you know I can uh, tweak with it a little bit and I can get it uh, I can get it down just like uh, 20 was uh, so let's do some more testing Okay, to keep this thing short, uh, the SWRs were uh, just a little over two on uh, 15 meters. Uh, so I, I've got the internal tuner on for this one. And uh, uh, just to show you that it tunes up there. So it, uh, it stays under the threshold and it will tune up with your internal tuner. 
on that. And, uh, you know, well, let's, uh, let's take a look and see if we get 17 here. 17 is not really a resonant band on this thing, but, uh, uh, you know, let's see, uh, let's see what it does do. Okay, same deal for uh, 17. Your SWRs are up in the twos on that, so uh, uh, it tunes up fine with the internal tuner. So you don't have to have an external tuner for this thing. And if you if you see there, uh, just uh, just perfect once again there for. Uh, uh, but you know it's got to you know you got to use your tuner for that. Uh, really, you want to use your tuner for 15 also. But now you can adjust the radial configuration with those bands also. And, uh, and and get them just uh, uh, just where you want them. So uh, this is my my little setup. Um, oh, I hear somebody else doing parks on the air. So I'm going to have my first park to park here in a minute. But I'm just not quite ready to get on the air yet. Uh, I'll pull my logging software up. You can't see these screens. Uh, I did not plan ahead for the sun, so please pardon that. Uh, N3 FJP uh, logger. Uh, thank you so much for making a, a fantastic uh, piece of software. There's my little go box. Now I'm a, um, you know, I'm a, um, a long timer is what I kind of <laughs> like to. Uh, I come out to the park and I plan to stay a little while. Uh, I don't do the uh, the roving. I'm I'm not really good at that, and my antenna is not made for roving. It's made for uh, a, it's quick deployment. I, mean, I got that thing up there. It was about five minutes total, uh, elapsed time, you know, between the little segments of video that we did. Uh, right at five minutes, I had this thing connected to the radio, had the antenna up in the tree. Uh, but now, in all fairness, I got lucky on the first throw. A lot of times, that's three or four throws before I get it right. Cause I'm not going to even lie to you, man. I'm I'm not that good at it. I can get some height on it, but I'm not very accurate. You know, I'm kind of like the wild pitcher in baseball. Uh, I might get some velocity on that thing, but you don't know where it's going. <laughs> but anyway, I like to come out and spend uh, about three hours when I can at the park. And I like to see how many contacts I get, see how many of you good people I can talk to. And, uh, you know, wrap it up, go home and uh, enjoy, uh, kind of revel in a nice day out in nature, sitting out here by the lake or wherever I happen to be and enjoy the fact that I got to get out and listen to some, uh, or talk to some good people uh, in a nice uh, low noise environment uh, with, with my antenna. So uh, that's my setup and I've got a 100 amp hour battery in there for the, uh, for the radio. And um, you know, I, could, I can run that thing for hours. I, I think I could probably, I don't know, 13, 14, 15 hours if I wanted, if I had that kind of, uh, uh, if I had that kind of composition to be able to handle that, uh, I, I could actually, uh, I could get that much out of there before I had to recharge it. Maybe, maybe a little more, but, uh, anyway, I'll, uh, I'll have another video or two, you know, with some of the other details on the antenna and I appreciate your, uh, your support, uh, you know, and, and if I can help you build this antenna in any way, I'm just an email away. Look at my QRZ page at, uh, uh, whiskey four Bravo Delta. And I've got information on the build, and uh, I'm, I'm an email away. Uh, it won't cost you a dime. Send me an email, and uh, <laughs> and I'll uh, I'll give you all the bad advice I can, my friends. Uh, seven three, and uh, we'll, we'll catch you on the air soon from uh, W four BD.